recently bought an iPod video 5th gen from eBay, and I was hoping that I was able to go ahead and order spare parts and upgrade it. So what I ended up doing is I ended up getting a new shell, new click wheel, a new battery, and a new hard drive, basically turning it into a brand new iPod, um, trying to keep everything else as intact as possible. I purchased all of these items from EOE Works, uh, but they are not sponsoring this channel at all. The new hard drive actually uses an SD card um, instead of a traditional spinning hard drive. And here you can see I'm getting a new shell as well. Um, this one is actually thicker than the one that the iPod came with. And in this bag contains the battery hard drive uh, that's going to be used, uh, the iFlash Solo. And the battery is a 3000 milliamp battery, which is much longer than the one they came with. And here is a translucent shell, which I'm kind of slowly falling in love with this aesthetic again. And in, you know, including the click wheel here that's transparent. One of the first things I did was I needed to format the SD card because uh, it needs to be usable uh, so that when you plug it into the iPod, the firmware is able to actually understand the kind of hard drive space you're dealing with. Uh, it should be EXFAT. And it seems like the card was actually pre-formatted that way, so I didn't really have to do any additional work. Here's the old hard drive that the iPod 5 came with, uh, sorry, iPod 5th gen. And here's the need to remove it slowly. Uh, this sort of like clip here is actually rather long. So it takes me a few tries to actually pull it out because you do it section by section, but it only pulls out a portion of this rather long kind of clip. So I needed to do it like three times in three separate sections to be able to get the cable connection from the spinning hard drive off the motherboard here. The next section is having to take off the connector that connects the headphone jack, the speaker, and the hold uh, switch. You know, that's all over there on that side. There are three screws on each side of the iPod that needs to be removed in order to be able to remove the actual holder. Um, and they use Phillips head screws here. And it's interesting because the frame seems so brittle on, on this section here. I guess it's just due to the fact that this iPod, I think, was released in like 2007 or 8. Uh, I can't quite remember the actual year, but it was in the mid to late 2000s. And here, this is the um, cable connection for the LCD screen itself. It needs to be you know, carefully done, but again, it's another situation where it's rather long, and so you need to try and address all the whole length of it at the same time. So with the screen now off, we can now pull apart the frame and pull the, the motherboard along with it. Along with the frame here and the motherboard, of course, is the click wheel, and that will need to be taken off in order to be able to replace it with a new one. Here, this section is glued to the frame, which I've had the hardest time trying to figure out what the functionality of this part of the click wheel is. The only thing I can think of is it's a form of ground. And here you have some stoppers that uh, will need to be cleaned. It's kind of reminiscent of my other video I have of the mini display that I ended up cleaning with all the sand and grime on it. Now with the section of the click wheel that was kind of glued onto the frame removed, we need to also remove this section as well. This seems like it's another grounding connection of some sort to the frame. Uh, you know, it's held on with like some sticky tape. And with both of those sections now removed, the motherboard is kind of connected with a double-sided adhesive. So it's it takes some time to push it off. But once it's done, um, we finally have the motherboard on its own that we can address. This is the connection for the click wheel, and this is another delicate little clip that needs to be carefully addressed. What's interesting about the circuitry here that I'm about to try and take apart, this is also double-sided tape adhered to the motherboard itself. So it takes a little bit of, you know, kind of consistent pressure to remove this. But the, uh, the next step after this is, you know, you take off the glue on the other side and you're able to remove this, is that the click wheel that you're going to be installing also has double-sided tape on the other side of it in order to mimic how it was being used before. So this is actually the problem that now you have to expose the adhesive side while also trying to slot in to that connection there at the same time. So you don't want to accidentally press down too hard while you're trying to insert this into the slot 
because you're trying to make it so you insert it into the slot and then as soon as you know it's in there correctly to then press down to mimic how it was originally done on the iPod before. So that's what made this rather tricky of an endeavor is to get the uh, it seated correctly. In this section, I'm actually using a multimeter to just test the connection to see that everything is seated properly. I had the hardest time trying to figure out whether it's slotted in far enough or not. And that's sort of a running theme while installing new components to this uh, iPod motherboard. It's not knowing whether you've actually seated it properly or not. Here we're trying to actually reinstall the motherboard and pushing it in a little bit. And here I was trying to actually mimic again the adhesive that was on the on the side of the other click wheel here. And I'm trying to use Kapton tape to put it on, but uh, in the end I don't think I was successful. So I just like let it be. In this section here, we're, re we're removing the LCD screen away because we're trying to install the new motherboard, but uh, I just want to show everyone what I was dealing with with the original screen. As you can tell, the one from eBay was incredibly scratched up and very hard to actually see through. Here, this is the actual LCD screen itself, and I'm using a Q-tip with a solution that's supposed to be delicate on screens. So I'm just like lightly trying to take the grime out because the intention is to put this LCD screen under new housing, under a new case, in order to be able to see things well. And I think I was able to take off most of the grime here. As you can tell, like I'm trying to work on it under the microscope as best as I can. This also ended up being a funny issue with the click wheel. The center button is really hard to actually line up and mount when you're trying to install it at this stage. So I used Kapton tape here just to hold it in place while I'm going to try and maneuver the case on top of it so that the click wheel kind of settles in there into the center appropriately. And I'm using the rest of the frame to guide in the installation here. And it's just kind of a press fit. You kind of press it a little bit um, in order to get the, the frame itself around and get everything situated. Here you'll see there's not enough clearance. There's some issue here with like the tolerance of the case itself that I just bought. And I know that Colin from This Does Not Compute, who whose video I use extensively to figure out what I was doing. He mentioned having to clip away something in order to make the screws fit in appropriately. But what I ended up doing was just, I pressed really hard and screwed it in. I thought that was fine. This next section, it's a, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to transfer over the headphone jack and the actual click wheel section and the hold button, of course, over into the new shell. And this is actually going to be a big problem because the shell, the new shell is actually thicker, as I mentioned earlier. And because of that, there is a different level of clearance when you're dealing with the headphones themselves. So like the headphone jack is a little bit thicker for the thick shell style. And the screw holes are a little bit different. So in, in here, you're seeing me take apart the headphone jack for the what they call the slim case. And these do not fit right on a thick case. And that was my fault for not paying close attention to what I was doing. When I was ordering these parts, I had assumed that, that it was gonna be okay to just reuse the same elements here of the headphones and stuff, but um, that was not the case. Like the, he the, the hold switch would work, but the headphone jack would not work. I thought it would keep this actual section in of just seeing me struggle trying to line up these holes on the, the the case that I bought that's actually the thick and needs actually like a different headphone jack component altogether. It just, it won't fit, it won't work, I promise you. I hope that this video maybe will help guide someone who's trying to do this and they figure that they can use interchangeable headphones. They need to do the research to get that going. This is actually a couple of days later and I ordered the new headphone jack that's intended only for thick cases and yeah, it's going to work just fine. Um, it actually has the right orientation, positioning, tolerances for fitting into the case like it was. And I wanted to use the thick case because it was newer and also because the battery, which is a 3000 milliamp hour battery, was going to be physically thicker as well. And here, a couple of days later, you know, finally getting to this part, it's inserting the click wheel and headphone jack connection back onto the main motherboard and we can finally get to the hard drive replacement which is this iFlash Solo uh, 
component, which is incredible, this like um, controller that acts as a new hard drive with no moving parts. And it fits the same connection slots here that connects to the motherboard. I needed to be really careful with this one to make sure that's seated properly. So you'll see that I'm pushing it even further than I actually originally thought you should. But because before it actually slipped out when I didn't push it far enough here and then using my fingers to close the gate because again this thing is so long microscopically speaking that you need to do something um, across the whole board at the same time and here's the 3000 milliamp thick battery that I bought it purposefully because I knew it was going to hold um, every all the components rather tightly together and trying to connect the battery in um, into the motherboard and to do a soft test here. And in this section, uh, it says like a uh, hard drive basically needs to be wiped. Uh, the iTunes uh, needs to be connected in order to flash the iPod. So all the connection here is working as expected. And here it's a very tough push in order to make things go because it's uh, in order to, you know, make the unit complete because it sounds like you're breaking it apart a lot of cracking is happening but uh if you push hard enough make sure that there's nothing around the edges that might get caught and then as soon as you hear all the clicks you should be done and here's the obligatory peel of the new shell and uh removing the capped on tape that's still stuck to the center wheel button click here and then this is me just double checking that everything's fitted properly. And then here's the final result. I thought it turned out great as long as you have all the parts and you know what you're doing. Um, I want to thank um, This Does Not Compute, Colin from his YouTube channel. Watching what he was doing helped me out immensely in figuring out what I was doing step by step. And I usually live stream these uh, kind of builds. So if you want to catch me, uh, follow my YouTube channel, follow my Twitch channel. Um, you can catch more of these events and maybe leave a comment.